there are some subject matters that would have caused serious controversies in the body of Christ today, except that they were spoken of directly by our Lord Jesus Christ. One of those subject matters is that of demons and demonology. Modern Christianity loves to live in the idea as if demons don't exist. But Jesus plainly told us they do. Jesus did not shy away from it. He didn't hide away from it. He tackled the subject head on. To begin this sermon, I want to start by saying to you clearly, don't play with demons. Don't interact with demons. Don't play demonically inspired games or board games. Demons are not something that should be played with or taken lightly. There is a real spirit world out there that can literally affect the world we live in. Allow this to be a word of warning. Don't play with demons, don't flirt with them. I know the world, and the media may romanticize witchcraft and wizardry and spell books, Ouija boards, incantations and occult involvement. But the Bible warns us against these things. There are children TV shows that get children as young as five years to chant spells. Just imagine that. The devil has no morals or integrity. He has no remorse. Neither does he have empathy. He will do anything he can to enter your life. Anything to do with the dark world is something you should not open the door to your life to. To me it is appearing as if society is going back to the days where demons are seen as a good thing. In ancient Greece, the word daimon, derived from the Greek verb diastai, meaning to divide or to distribute, had decidedly positive overtones. Demons in ancient Greece were considered divine, possessors of supernatural powers, fates, guardian spirits, or angels who give guidance and protection, which scarcely are depicted in ancient Greek art or mythology as their presence was felt rather than seen. To have a demon back then or a demon helping you was seen as a good thing in the past. And with the way the TV and TV shows glorify this now, it appears as if we are traveling back to this direction. For the record, there are no such things as good demons as some people claim and believe. No demon is good. Demons don't repent. They do not show mercy. All they seek after is to harm humans because we are created in the very image and likeness of God. So the devil and his demons are here on earth just to wage war against those that associate with Jesus Christ. Don't play with demons because the end result will be regretful. Jesus told us, the mission of the devil and his agents in John 10 verse 10. He likened them to a thief whose mission is to steal, to kill and to destroy. Demons don't have any better intention than these descriptions. Frankly speaking, they can do you good to accomplish their mission to steal, kill and destroy if that is the way they can successfully attack a person. Fundamentally, you need to understand you live in a world that is full of spirits. Do you know there is an instance where a demon-possessed man came to church in the Bible? Mark 1 verse 22 and 23 And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. From the ministry of Jesus, we see that a demon could be in a church, 
A man with an unclean spirit was in the synagogue as Jesus taught the people, and the unclean spirit cried out through him. About a decade ago, a home in Gary, Indiana was demolished because of the demonic activity that occurred there. The home was nicknamed a portal to hell. Numerous demonic instances occurred at this home. For instance, the people who lived in the home were sometimes possessed by those demons. In 2012, a mother who had experience in the home was interviewed. Out of the experiences, she shared the fact that her daughter levitated above the bed and suspended in midair. The girl was raised right off her bed and levitated. She quite literally levitated. The demon would speak out to the family, and the family described the voice of the demon as sounding quite literally like death. The lady recounted that she, along with her family, witnessed clear liquid seeping from the walls and footsteps that could be heard on the basement stairs with no trace of anyone. Now, what really caught my attention is the fact that doctors, nurses, a priest, and several police officers all witnessed these events, which included her son walking backwards up a hospital wall. That is something that literally defies all logic, but one thing you need to remember when dealing with demons, they are supernatural in nature. Just imagine that her son walked backwards up a wall in a hospital and all the doctors and nurses ran away. This wasn't witnessed by one person, but numerous people. It is also recorded that visitors saw ugly, black-figured monsters in the home. Numerous activities took place in that home which was confirmed both by medical practitioners, law enforcement agents, and casual visitors. Zach Bagans, a host and producer of the show titled Ghost Adventurers, bought the house in 2014 and demolished it later on. The summary of his report says, something was inside that house that had the ability to do things that I have never seen before. Things that others carrying the highest forms of credibility couldn't explain either. There was something there that was very dark, yet highly intelligent and powerful. There was a real portal to hell in this home. All the witnesses saw something spectacular and dreadful in that house. As a matter of fact, the priest who was invited to do a ritual cleansing in the house attested to the fact that demons were there. There were further reports of people picked up and flung against walls and furniture by some supernatural force. Strange demonic figures appearing in different shapes like the shadow of a man, a black looming monster, a ghost of a withered old lady with red eyes and a hood, flowing odorless oil from the house wall. The operations of demons are very real. People have reported unexplained disturbances in their homes, such as objects moving without cause, inexplicable sounds, and eerie apparitions. Others have recounted feeling oppressed by an unseen presence, experiencing a deep sense of dread, or encountering manifestations that defy natural explanation. These experiences, often dismissed or rationalized by modern society, point to a reality that the Bible has long affirmed, the existence and operation of demonic forces. In this context, it is important for Christians to be spiritually discerning and grounded in Scripture. The Bible provides numerous accounts and teachings that equip believers to recognize and resist demonic influences. For instance, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 2.11 admonishes believers not to be outwitted by Satan for we are not ignorant of his designs. This implies a call to awareness and understanding of the spiritual realm, including the strategies and tactics of demonic forces. Exposure to things of the demonic world, a person can open themselves up to the dark world. Knowing that demons are real, now let's talk about what you can do in the fight against them. Firstly, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, 
having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints.